Dr. Bill Deagle is with us once a week. He is uh, on Thursdays and tonight's the night, and this is the hour. Hello, Bill. Welcome back. How are you? Uh, good. I'd like to split the show, the first half, dealing with all the nuclear and the other craziness. In the second half, I want to deal with the uh, part of the solutions is to change the way people look at everything from uh, their personal problems to pollution to uh, the idea of wellness. Uh, I had an interest You're going discussion. to try to change people? Well, I, we're going to have Sounds to Sounds a little suspect to me. Hey, well, you must uh, be I'll one of those untrustworthy people. types, terrorists, they uh, call them. Well, the main thing is we've got to change people who want to be changed. Yeah. The, the main thing that people do first is they ask better questions, as they say, the tagline on our show. Uh, I had on the first hour of the program today Dr. Sam Milham, and he's written he's, a book called yeah. Dirty Electricity. Great guy. And what's interesting, uh, we've had him on many times. He'll be back on probably monthly. And uh, Sam is a retired doctor, and he goes around with his oscilloscope and his electronic equipment and he's written this. He's actually one of our teachers in the Academy of Environmental Medicine, along with Dr. Uh, Bernhoft. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm in the process of putting together a federal lawsuit here in San Diego County against San Diego Gas and Electric <clears throat> and the Public Utilities Commission. And it's going to be filed in federal court. And if I'm clever enough, which we're hoping, uh, everybody keep your fingers crossed, it won't get turfed out. If it isn't, it will be converted by... A group of five attorneys in, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, that work with Jonathan E. Moore. They're part of his legal team. Uh-huh. And we're going to try to convert this to a federal class action lawsuit. Now, that'll be out of my hands at that point. Right now, people can't join it because it's my suit just yeah. against San Diego Gas. Yeah. And the three grounds that we're going to file against are basically non-thermal damage to the population, unjust enrichment, which is a RICO violation. <clears throat> and the third area uh, is the area that they're actually putting public in danger. For example, the San Bruno fire... We know that the the currents that are generated by switching mode power supplies actually can trigger off gas fires. And we know hmm. that the kind of systems they're using actually degrade power lines, water lines, et cetera, because it dumps dirty electricity that degrades power lines and water lines and can have an effect on infrastructure such as gas line ruptures. So it can actually speed them. <clears throat> we have proof of that in that legal case. Now, what is, the reason why I say that is uh, over the last couple of visits we had with Dr. Sam, and with uh, our ex- expert from Less EMF, and that is a dentist who's also a medical a, a, an engineer. Uh huh. Her uh, name is Emil de Toffel from Less EMF, one of our companies that supplies equipment for us for testing your home or office or building, like a gigahertz solution for looking at your smart meters and oscilloscope and spectral analyzers and magnetometers. And I've acquired over the last three years all this equipment, so I've got everything. <clears throat> and the, the easiest piece of equipment is a ten or fifteen dollar AM radio. Tune it just a little off a channel, and you can walk around your house. <clears throat> and if your channel gets jammed, then you've got dirty electricity. It could be a, it could be a step down transformer for your computer. It could be a, 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 a dimmer switch. Yeah. It could be bad wiring in your wall. But that channel will actually start. You'll start to see a jamming of the AM channel. So mm-hmm. it's easy. Just walk around with an AM radio. Now the reason why I say this, <clears throat> is it turns out that uh, a few weeks ago, Emil sent me an article that dealt with the uh, stress that happens with el- dirty electricity, and it actually now is published in the National Library of Medicine with a lot of references of specific gene tests you can do, specific oxidative marker tests, et cetera. In other words, we have physical tests we can do to show you're at higher risk, but everybody is. <clears throat> There's just subsets of population because of their genetics and their previous exposure, mm-hmm. and it's interesting the exact same things happen to tissue as happened from ionizing radiation, micronuclei, DNA breaks, oxidative uh, induction of DNA, so you get 8-hydroxy, 2 pram deoxyguanosine, oxidized fatty acids, disrupted cellular proteins and structure mitochondrial crystagoli. Literally everything you see with radiation occurs with non-ionizing. Now, we have solutions, and they're nutraceutical solutions and technological. <clears throat> and the, one of the problems I see is we're probably not going to change the, the, the momentum toward bad financial decisions worldwide, Correct. the momentum toward war worldwide, yeah. or the momentum toward societal breakdown worldwide. But what we can do is we can insulate ourselves by taking the right nutraceuticals, not taking the toxic drugs, knowing what drugs are safe, and there's a very tiny number, maybe about 1 in 10. By the way, a lot of supplements, drugs, uh, as Bill will tell you, are not pure, not wholesome, and not good for you. That's right. The well, the ones truth. we carry are of a, a class that is stellar. If you don't take protection now, if you don't detox your body from radiotoxins from Fukushima, heavy metals, fluoride, etc., and you add now electrotoxins from dirty electricity, smart meters, etc., 
even the Zigbee network that there's communicating on is the same as the microwave frequency of your microwave. So it's literally turning your house into a low-level microwave. So I tell people it's not optional to take nutraceuticals. And uh, I'll give an example. One of the things that's been shown very clearly, and this is comparing uh, you know, groups of the population that live in America, then they buy a building, they strip the electricity. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. And those farmers and those people, we don't even need to mention their name, mm-hmm. They lived at the beginning of the century 20 to 30 years longer than the average population in New York City. They lived 75 years compared to 45 in New York. And they still live longer, even though they eat a diet that you'd think would kind of clog all their arteries off and make them demented and do lots of things. Their children don't get vaccinated. They don't live with electricity at all, right? Yep. And <clears throat> they try to live a kind of much more subsistence life. They don't use pesticides and other right. things that will right. kill off bees like neonicotinoid pesticides. And this dirty electricity is jamming the the uh, navigation system for the pollinating insects. So they, they're literally, we're going to soon be stuck with gruel. You're teaching the various ways we're screwing up the atmosphere. We're also putting nanoparticles in the upper atmosphere to literally weaponize the well, planet. Just, just wait until Google releases its 180-plus satellites to ring the planet and bathe it in Wi-Fi. Just wait. Right. Well, see, Wi-Fi, basically, your cells are Wi-Fi. And if you have the same frequencies, your cells don't know what the hell's going on. So specific enzymes tuned to a certain frequency. Those frequencies were discovered by both the Russians and the Americans independently. And when they spied on each other, they were surprised that they found the same frequencies that were lethal to cells. These frequencies are blocked by things like the Stetzer um, capacitors, which are low-frequency toxic frequencies. And what they are basically is they're primarily harmonic frequencies for major minerals in the body, like zinc, metalloenzymes. And, uh, you know, collagen and, you know, uh, iron and other, you know, in other words, they're basically made major processes like glutathione peroxidase, sucar oxide dismutase, the various enzymes to protect you, and minerals that can regulate enzyme activity and, and gene induction. So what they're doing basically is they're jamming your cellular communication. Now, uh, I want to walk this back because we did uh, half of the show last week. We talked about a little 12-year-old boy, theoretically, that I could try to help. It probably, considering this little boy, would require intensive work on this little fellow for a doctor to spending an hour a day at least for months, plus everything from IV therapy to enzymes to, you know, uh, plethora of nutraceuticals. Uh, to digestive enzymes, to immunotherapy. And if he's bad enough, the four little fellow might even require a bone marrow transplant. Most of the people that have been exposed even to lower level radiation, like say on the Ronald Reagan, if they're relatively healthy now, they should have a bone marrow drawn. And this is advice to them. And they should have it banked right away because if they crash or they get cancer and their doctors suggest, you know, whole body radiation or chemotherapy, if they don't have a banked bone marrow, they're really screwed. So that's a smart move to make, and that's a medical move. There are medical things that I tell people to do that make sense, and there's other ones that don't. And the other thing you might do is check your relatives to make sure who has the closest match bone marrow if you crash. Because if you don't know this in advance, you can die because the doctors are scrambling around and don't have that data. Um, We're living in a world that I think is terminal. And uh, I know this is really bad news for people, but they need to hear it. Well, I, uh, I, 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 we, I've been saying it for many years. and so right, Well, you're one of the few uh, bright lights that actually is brave enough to face the truth, but also optimistic enough to know that there's a segment of population that will be surviving colonies like the, the Postman, correct. By, uh, Kevin Costner, that will survive the uh, apocalypse, huh. and they'll, be, uh, they'll connect by maybe the Pony Express, post-apocalyptic, that there'll be a group of people that will basically say, hey, you know, we're going to survive this. We're taking uh, measures, which might be simple nutraceuticals. We're going to filter our water so we're not drinking radiotoxins. We're going to stop eating meat because the meat's radioconcentrating cesium-137. We're going to eat fish only that's non-filter feeders from the Atlantic Ocean because it's relatively non-toxic now if you have any fish at all or protein. We're going to eat nuts that are basically not downwind. They're going to concentrate radiotoxins like mm-hmm. cesium, strontium, etc. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if we don't start doing these things, the human race, and this is my prediction, and I've talked to all my top experts, including Dr. William Ray, who's been the president many times and founder of the Academy of Environmental Medicine, Dr. Bernhoff, Dr. Leo Hansen, many other specialists. The human race basically has 20 years. 20 that's years. About, that's about it. And I, and I say 2034, 2035, human beings will be dumbed down, very sick, 
incapable of reproduction, so toxic that the healthcare system will well, break be walking the zombies, economy. A lot of them will just be idiots. It's and the really... doctors, of course, will, will resort to a eugenics-type medicine where they'll dispatch people with polypharmacy, memory care, which is what's already in Obamacare, where they make you a memory, and they give you a bathtub of narcotics to dispatch you with a video of your dying days in a in an extended care facility. It's it's sad, but it's so and true. That's, it, we yeah. can avoid that future if number one we become aware of the present and face it. But it means nutraceuticals now. It means a diet change. It means filtering your air in your home. It means being aware when you go and check on my site or on your site, Jeff. We've got all those sites up, including ours now for gamma detector. That this is not a joke. When we're looking at, at I say one thirty seven, this is not a joke when we talk about fluoridation, GMO food that makes animals that you eat make your sperm count drop to zero or cause bone cancer. This is not a joke when we're dealing with radiotoxins that are bioaccumulating in the next four, five, ten years. The things that are happening to Japanese people now are going to happen to us. It's yes, not sir. a joke. Yeah, you know, they are they, actually they already are happening to us. They are happening slow, and people don't know it. Slow, incrementally. Well, not so slow, actually. uh, All along the coast. Listen to this. Within six weeks, six weeks, the highest intensive, largest intensive care nursery in Pennsylvania had a 42% increase in fetal mortality rate in premature babies. Yeah, well, our... 42%. It's up eight times here in in Washington State. Right. When you look at birth uh, defects, like anencephaly, no brains. Yeah, eight times. Other uh, major brain defects, like uh, the false cerebri and everything are gone. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, it's massively increased. Yep. When we look at thyroid cancer, thyroid nodules, one of my favorite guys on TV is the guy and his lady, Torek and Christina on Flip or Flop. They kind of take homes, they're realtors, and they flip them, and they're up in Orange County. One of the nurses watched him and actually had a great big damn lump in the bottom of his neck, and poor Torek ended up with thyroid cancer, and it was bad enough he ended up with radiation. Now, I don't know the medical details, mm-hmm. but the rate of cancer – not just on the West Coast, but across America and the whole Northern Hemisphere, mm-hmm. went up 400 to 800 percent, both benign nodules and thyroid cancer. And yeah, as these yeah. longer isotopes yeah. bioaccumulate, you're going to see more bone marrow cancers, heart failure, cardiac arrhythmias, atrial fibrillation, dementia, gland failure, polyglandular failure, breast cancer. The research on small mammals is cesium-137 is tied directly and linearly, exponentially, to breast cancer. So you're going to see breast cancer go orbital. And people say, like this guy that was in the tech guy that came in from, uh, his name was Sonny from Doc- Data Doctors. Mm-hmm. He said he served on the Ronald Reagan from 2007 to nine. Yeah, and that's was, uh, this is an interesting story, folks. So pay attention. Yeah, he said he wasn't worried. He wasn't worried about the radiation. I said, well, I said, well, the Ronald Reagan is now they're considering dumping it in the ocean because they tried to remediate with many millions of dollars, stripping all the wiring and ventilation. 18 months. 18 months in right. Seattle. And his eyebrows went up. And I said, and many of the crew now are dying after passing through the plume three times. And I said, you're not worried. You're not worried when 5,500 miles, those radioisotopes are just as hot and radioactive as when they arrive in the California coast as they arrive in Belarusia or over the poles or arrive in, in North Africa or anywhere. Those isotopes don't know where they've been traveling. Uh, as long as the isotope hasn't changed its atomic structure, it's still got its high energy KEV electron emission, uh, neutron flux, or any other biological factor related to its its its, its nuclear activity. I said the, the nuclear chemistry. I said I'm a nuclear chemist. I was a radiation doctor for the ACOM, American College for Occupational Environmental Medicine. Took him and I told him all this stuff, and his eyebrows really went up. <laughs> I said, "You're not worried." I said, "We don't know when or how or if it's going to go up." No, but we're going to monitor it. So we're looking only at gamma, which means we're only really looking at cesium-137. So if we look at our curve and all of a sudden we see a trend line where it's going up from 40 counts a minute to 60 to 70 to 80, uh-huh. we got a problem, Houston. Yep. And when I said that to him, you could tell he shut up. He realized, like, oh, damn. I said, you know, people like you that try to dismiss it because it's okay, you're tough guys. Tough guy doesn't do it.